happy Thursday to all of you. Beautiful there out there. I'm just Same to you. okay to people coming. So don't forget next um, Monday at nine o'clock, nine a.m. Role play. There are a lot of agents. They don't understand and appreciate what role play does for them. If you knock at the doors and the gentleman comes out, find out you're a real estate agent and he see, oh, my neighbor sold for uh, recently. Uh, how much do you think my home is worth? You don't, uh, an agent can say, well, I think your home should be around one million five. Or an agent can say, I'd like to see your house. Can we go inside your house and show it to me? A professional real estate agent is a salesperson. Remember, we have our portion of customer service, but most importantly, we are salespeople. So a good salesperson would say, yes, your neighbor sold for one million four. Are you thinking of selling? So immediately turn turn the table back and ask questions. Right. All right. So this is the difference between a customer service and a salesperson. Mm -hmm. All right. So come on uh, Monday morning at nine o'clock, nine a.m., and uh, we're going to go through different kind of role play with the script, and that would help all of you. Next Thursday, we are going to talk about how to do how to do video newsletter. This is what I do all the time. And there is a how, there is when, there is how many times we should do that. And there is what is the content, what is the duration. We don't want to bug people all the time, which I understand. And I'm not in that position to bug people. I want them to get informed. So come on next Thursday at 10 o'clock and we're gonna I'm gonna share you share with you exactly what I do. And hopefully you can do repeat the same thing. These days, people are visual, very visual. So mm -hmm. if you give them a, a brochure of 10 pages versus watching a um, two minutes video, again, 100% they're going to go for two minutes video. That is correct. Remember to use the uh, large library of information and materials I have on YouTube. This is, these are for you guys. I'm recording mm -hmm. it, uh, prepare them and put it there for you so you can learn. These are very basic, uh, practical um, strategies that I'm sharing with you. These are the things that I do for myself and you be my guest, you can do the same thing. But these are a lot of videos there. Lead generation action plan. This is what you're gonna talk today. All right. The truth here is, if you have no clients, you have no transaction, and you have no money. This is the brutal truth, reality. And this is what we live every single day. A journey to build up your career in real estate. See, the foundation that you're building brick by brick is made of clients and transaction. You build up tomorrow brick by brick. That's a reality. If you cannot successfully lay down the bricks, you make no future. To build a house or your life or your business, you need to have a design or a plan to do that. You need to have materials and instruction. Uh, in your career in real estate, you need to determine your goal. You need to determine your sales action plan and time time frame. Now, the reason I'm building up all of this to get to our subject of lead generation, these are the important elements for us to understand. Lead generation, if you don't know what you're doing, you have no direction, no plan, no numbers of lead that you need every single month, it's just wasting your time. So that's what I always tell uh, the uh, agents. Step back, relax, take one day off, give one hour every single day to address the issues, the things, the plan that you want to have for your business. It's not rushing to the market, door knock, phone call, phone call, phone call, and you don't know what you're doing. It's like jumping to the swimming pool and try to go from one distance to another. You cannot. You have to know what you're doing.
your success and your income in real estate are in direct relation to the clarity of your plan. And here is one example. I find it cute. What kind of agent you are? So number one on the top left. Well, you have some financial goal. You have you don't know what is your target, um, the number of transactions you want to do. Um, you don't you're not sure how many days per week you want to work. You're sure of nothing. The second one, you like to have a lot of money. If I ask you as a real estate agent how much income you want to make per per month or per year, well, I want to have a lot of money. I want to have um, a lot of deal. And who are your target audience? Well, I want to work with everybody, selling, buying, uh, two uh, members family or big families, doesn't matter. I want to do all the transactions. And how many days you want to work per, per month? Well, as less as possible. So everything has an ambiguous answer. It's not clear. Versus the third one. It has a clear picture of what he wants to do. It's set. The second one, the middle one, has a blurry picture of what could happen. There are a lot of could, would, wishes, hope that happen in the middle one. The first one said, I don't know. He's all over. He has no idea what he's doing. And the last one has a clear idea of what he wants to do. I like to make $300,000. My target is downsizers. I want to have 15 deals this year. I want to work five days for 11 months and more. Now, out of these four salespeople, agents, can you build a very successful real estate business? Now, defining success here is different from individuals to individuals. For one person, um, having $200,000 a year, uh, some others are targeting for 800000 or $1 million. Uh, success for them here is to spend enough time with their families, um, have more free time for themselves and work as a real estate agent. So asking the, this kind of a question um, and defining success for the first one, we tell them, would $500,000 be a success for you? I said, he would laugh at you and said, that's impossible. The second one said, maybe, yeah, well, it's a possibility. The third one said, there is possibility, maybe I can do it. The third one is an absolute yes. I can make half a million this year, no question. He would consider himself successful. So out of this four, which one of these four do you think he can reach that goal? I consider your your silence as a shy to participate, not knowing. I know you are all smart. So, the answer to this one, uh, to be successful, is the last guy. Absolutely, that's certain. So, what do you need to build up your foundation, clients, your transactions? All you need is clients. Less clients financially, meaning a weaker agent. More clients financially, we're talking about a strong agent. Sample of prospecting scenario that I lay down for you here. This is very typical for door knocking. You can apply almost the same thing for cold calling, open houses, events, whatever you want to call it. But I am picking on door knocking there are so many agents that they are door, doing door knocking here. So if you need 20 deals, you need 40 appointments because it's hypothetically, you are going to not be able to get. So let's be generous here. Let's say out of 40, you can sign 50% of it. Now, we know that approximately 60 doors would give you one lead. To get 40 leads, we need to door knock 2,400 doors. Meaning, one day you can knock at 60 doors to get one lead. 
Therefore, 2,400 doors is equal to 40 days, which is eight weeks of five days work, or let's say two months. Now, there's a problem with that statement, that activities schedule. And here's the problem. No guarantee of 60 doors would give you one lead. I had cases, I knock at 80 doors, 90 doors, no lead whatsoever. And the other scenario, I knock at five doors and the first door open, I got a lead. So there is no guarantee that if you door knock at 60 doors, you would get one lead. And door here, what I mean here is uh, knocking at doors, you get 20 contacts or 30 contacts. Out of those 30 contacts, you get one lead. Second problem, not all the leads would convert to transactions. Sometimes they change their mind. Sometimes their son is purchasing their house. So there's no guarantee to that. Not all the leads are closing immediately. It, it might take a few months or sometimes I've seen two years. So when we say if you knock at 60 doors, you're going to get one lead. So if you continue doing that within a few months, you can get one home listed or purchase. There's no guarantee to that. So what do we do? What is the, how can we fix this problem? And this is a valid problem. It could happen with cold calling. I cold call for almost a year. I had um, that device that could call three at the same time. And I had a load of um, phone numbers, calling, 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 calling. The results varies one day versus the other day. So there are a lot of up and down there. So this inconsistency in getting result from your lead generation activities is there. So how can we fix this problem? Add to your prospect need pillars. Uh, so I highly recommend you to have at least four different ways of prospecting. Have at least one of them automated or have some kind of leveraging meaning four pillars of prospecting. I'm gonna come up with an example here. Do, uh, do resilient follow-up, be brutal, be fanatical. You cannot afford to lose the leads that you get. Most of the cases you can close a deal or get someone to walk along with you as a client between eight to 12 touches. So when you've called them first day, when you contact the guy the second time, third time, many, many agents, they give up. After six times, seven times, many of the agents are giving up. So that's not is, that is not a reality that we have out there. Here's one example for pillars of prospecting. Let's say pillar number one is door knocking. That's a traditional prospecting could be cold calling, could be open houses. Uh, second one, open house. Third one, referral SOI. Pillar number three is not a choice. You have no choice. This is part of the deal. If you're a real estate agent, this is the very first pillar of prospecting you have to have. If you're talking to me, if you come to my office, sit for a session of conversation and uh, training, and you want to close your eyes on this one, I cannot work with you. SOI, sphere of influence, past clients referral is a must. Uh, next one is a, is a flyers, online prospecting. These are all using leveraging. Uh, even radio or TV that not many agents are doing TV these days. It's very, very expensive. Radio, I know some agents, they are doing that. Or hiring a VA or an assistant. These are the leveraging. You have to have some kind of leveraging in your uh, prospecting. Now, if you send your flyers by Canada Post, that is leveraging. I've seen agents. I'm knocking at one side of the street. I see agent on the other side of the street. It happened a few times. They are putting door hangers. They, they put door hangers, homes after homes after homes, and they go. I'm telling them, hey, buddy, you're not a Canada Post. Don't waste your time. Give them a little bit of money or hire a, a, a young fellow. Um, give him $40. Uh, 
to cover the same area for you. You go after the most important matter for you. You are a licensed real estate agent. Your time is supposed to have more value than hanging the door hangers. Now, if you knock at the door, the story would happen is that you might get someone into a conversation. And that's happened. That same street that I saw the guy was putting door hanger. I knock. People would open the door having conversation. Actually, I got one lead there. That guy who was putting door hanger got no leads. Was hoping that this lawyers, that door hangers, would bring him deals. It doesn't. The door hangers are not salesperson. You are salesperson. Now, what do you need to build up your foundation? How to increase your found, uh, your production and lead conversion process? Now, this interval of timing of 12 months, build up with four pillars of prospecting. Should one of these four should have one automation leveraging component there or pillar in there. Now, drip campaign would also help you with follow up. And this is also part of the automation. So leverage by online tools, whether it's paid or unpaid. We're talking about social media here. Even you can use LinkedIn. Um, half an hour ago in my office, I was walking through the hallway and this is shared building, many offices here. One of the um, business owner just passed by me and said, great article I saw yesterday. I put an article in LinkedIn. He saw it because it's connected to the same community of LinkedIn. People would see, not necessarily talking. I had many conversations from other people, mortgage brokers, anyone else, saying we follow you and we read your articles. Amazing. And remember, with your articles, please, please, as much as you could, put your own personal pictures in different situations. You are walking in the park, you are with your family, or you can put your favorite car standing beside it, uh, not to show off, but just for people to put the article in, together with your picture. See, this is coming from you. You're active, you're busy, you're helping, you're doing a lot of things. You give value, you give uh, content to the audience. They are important to you. And your online activities could be uh, paid, posted adver uh, advertising, or could be uh, just um, posting an article. Add more prospecting time. This is another strategy. If you are knocking at doors once a week, I suggest you to make it five days a week, weather permits. Go there. Um, instead of spending one hour, you may want to spend two hours. So you give more time to prospecting. Hire agents or helper. If you're in that position, you can always hire um, an assistant. Sharpen your skills. I repeated this story many, many times. A few years ago, I was knocking at the door of expensive homes. I think at that time it was $3 million home. This lady opened the door, conversation started. She said, yeah, we are thinking of selling. Oh, that's great. Here's my business card. This is what I said. Here's my business card. Give me a call. That person listed the house two weeks after, never called me. Why? I lost a good deal because I wasn't, I didn't have the skill. Oh, you want to sell your house? That's great. How long you been living here? Five years. That's amazing. And when you sell, where are you going to go? Well, we're going to go to Kitchener. Oh, and how soon would that be? Well, we're thinking about two months. So this conversation with a script has a direction. You find out where they are going, the urgency and motivation, rather than give the business card and say goodbye. Oh, um, I'd like to uh, come and see you. Okay, come another day. Get them into conversation, find out. So on the right time, you can pinch the right point. When they say, well, we like to sell it. Uh, and also you find out that they want, they're gonna start their job in Kitchener in two months you know they have to go. So you can work on that. Do you really want to price your uh, your home too expensive and miss going to Kitchener on time? Or you want to sell it and go relax, start your job in Kitchener? So you can use all those um, conversations. Upgrade yourself, dress sharp, associate with different 
friends and change, maybe you change your target audience. These are the steps that can improve the return, the result of your prospecting. For instance, I always say, many agents talking to me, they want to do, go and, do, and knock at doors for townhouses, a smaller house. I like to go to the bigger homes. One of the reason here is I see them very relaxed, the homeowners. Also, I can bring up the idea of investing in real estate because apparently they have more money rather than a small, tiny townhouse. They can barely pay the mortgage. I'm just generalizing here. I'm not saying this is absolute case, but if I go to a bigger house, would you like to sell, buy, no? Well, how about investing in real estate? You know, we were thinking about investing in real estate. And there were cases in the past that I knock at the door. The guy said, listen, my neighbor right, left, front of my house, they're all real estate agents. And I know them. I can easily go with them. But because you point out to the investment and you said you are doing that all the time, then I like to work with professional real estate investors agent. I bought him a house. I just sold another house from him. I got connected with him. Now there is trust friendship that builds up throughout this process. So that's important to where you targeting, even cold calling, um, even events. You can have events for real estate investment. You can do door knock at that whole area and uh, pick the neighborhood that you want. You can invite member of parliament or uh, a councilor, city council. There are many activities you can do but change your targets, change your, uh, look at them, how you can maximize whatever you do. Uh, I always believe that there are things that you can tweak. For instance, when you give away your business card, have your QR code. Now, these days I see all the agents use the QR code. Or have a QR code connected to a video that explains the situation. So that is adding value to prospecting. Could be the same thing uh, for your flyers. Could happen the same thing for your open houses. Don't just be there and uh, say, hello, this is the house, go take a look at it. There are many other things that you can add value to your uh, prospecting. Get continuous training in all aspects of real estate, hire a mentor or a trainer. Online uh, automate, these are some of the uh, the uh, hint for automation, online posting, online lead generation, send flyers. Okay, let me stop here. Some of this lead generation tool, it costs you some money. Same thing for door knocking, same thing for cold calling, same thing for anything else that you do. Time is money. So I have peace of mind when I'm knocking at doors is not one entity's prospecting myself. I know while I'm knocking at the door, there is another engines running, doing the same thing through social media. So there are two engines working at the same time. So that's leveraging. And that should be your mindset as well. Send flyers, hire a, a virtual assistant to do many tasks such as a weekly mass email, uh, build up your team, use AI in many aspects of marketing, lead magnet, uh, audio broadcast, schedule drip campaign. Audio broadcast, when I was getting training with Craig Proctor, uh, one of the tools he had was audio broadcasting, meaning you record a sentence as a real estate agent, and you have the phone number of many, many people, let's say two, 3,000 um, phone number you have. So with one click, and that's leveraging, with one click, your audio is broadcasted to all of them. I heard this lady in Montreal did it and she got 12 deals. So I did it for a while and I got two deals from it, $40,000. Why not? So this is leveraging. Be creative. Uh, give me a call if you need some uh, light on your creation. I am very creative. I can always help you there. But there are tools that you can use. Many agents, they don't use it. Or they don't know how to use it. So clarity of your action plan, clarity in your prospecting, clarity in your 
approaches to any situation is very crucial. Just write down on the piece of paper, what are your prospecting action? Rethink it to see if there's any way you can tweak it for better. You can add more things in there. And that would uh, that would change your prospect and that would make your prospecting more effective. Instead of getting one lead, you might get eight leads. So if you want to go to your destination, let's say, say you want to go to Montreal, it doesn't make sense that you wake up that same day and say, okay, now I'm, yesterday I told I want to go to Montreal, now I want to go there. Have you thought about how you're going to get there? How much gas you need for your car? How much money is going to cost you? What direction you want to go? What highway you want to take? What time you're going to leave? What time you're going to get there? These are preparation. So what I see as attitude of real estate agents, then this is very common for smaller agents. They get active in creating leads. And then once they get a, 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 a listing to sell, they are all for selling that property. They are missing out on prospecting activities versus an active, sharp, strong agent because he created a system that is running regardless. When once he's busy with one, two, three, five listings, that prospecting system continues working. So what to do? Get an accountability partner and a mentor. A mentor can tell you, hold on a second. Great job you did. You have one listing. You spend two hours admin putting a sign, which is the wrong thing to do, putting your lockbox, going there, taking pictures. You promise me from nine to 12 today and every day, five days, you are on the phone calling to the neighborhood, telling that this house is on the market. Do you also want to sell? You promised me from nine to 12, you are going to knock at doors in this neighborhood. You are falling away from that promise. Go back and do it. Then after 12 at one o'clock, if you wanna put go in there and install your lockbox, go there, but not from nine to 12 you check mark. So that's the importance of someone that keep you accountable. Set up your daily schedule. This is very crucial because if you're all over, you will be all over. But if you have a schedule, set a schedule things to do. And I very often show this to the people that I'm working with. Um, beside every single day, my schedule, I have my monthly action. So every day when I wake up, I have to see what I have to do. And I would do that. Otherwise, my article that I put on LinkedIn yesterday would not get there because I forget. Dedicate a strong daily, uh, yeah, dedicate to a strong daily routine. Be a little bit less um, gracious to yourself in a, in a, um, in a term of your daily activity. Don't be flexible to yourself. Well, today I want to sleep till 10 o'clock. Um, I don't feel like it. Just go and follow a, a discipline for yourself. That would give you a result rather than I don't know what to do today. I don't feel it. Don't go with your feelings because your feeling is going up and down. I guarantee that. But you have to have a structure. Any big companies in this world follow a structure. Any business follow the structure. Be resilient, don't give up. And then that, that is the mindset of a real estate agent. And I'm telling you, it's not a matter of working physically. These are the agents that put a lot of physical energy into real estate business is not necessarily a successful agent. An agent can put his mind together with his action, make more money than an agent that put less mindset and put a ton of energy in the business. If you are doing very well, you actually need to put less physical, less time into your business. 
That's why strong agents usually take Saturday, Sunday off, they spend time with their family because they orchestrate and they organize their business so well. Business is running on its own. Systematize tools and automation. We talked about that. Keep learning, focus on your goals. This is the book I read some time ago. It's a great book done by Tim Grover. He is a coach for all the top-notch um, sport people, mostly basketball. And he is telling what is their secret? What do they do different that they become number one in their career? And you can apply those principles to your real estate business as well. You're all quiet. So any question for me? What is the what is the name of this writer of the relentless? Tim Grover. Tim Grover. Yeah, T I M Grover. Or Tim Grover. Okay. Yeah, he has many books. Um, it's good. Okay. It's very very okay. solid. Okay. Any question? No, I think you're good. If you have any yep. question, uh, specific questions. You can always give me a call. You have all my phone number, 647-407-4049. Uh, that's it. I wish you a wonderful Thursday. Go make it. Go make a lot of money and keep your mindset strong.